Earlier in the uh, broadcast, we talked with David Stockman about Washington's response to the growing U.S. debt load, and he wasn't hopeful they could move past their squabbling anytime soon. Our next guest says it will take a crisis like 9-11 to spur a binding long-term fix from Washington. Peter Tanis is the co-author of the new book, Debt Deficits and the Demise of the American Economy. Nassim Taleb, uh, author of The Black Swan, says, before reading this book, I was concerned now I'm scared, and I think Matt and I are a little scared, too. Uh, Peter, good to have you here with us. What kind of 9-11 event c could happen, in your well, view? The, of course, we're talking about a financial 9-11, right. and there are a lot of different scenarios, but basically, the politicians are so polarized that it will take a crisis to get, this, to get them to come together and get something done. There, anybody can have a scenario. One possibility would be a failed treasury auction. Hmm. Not enough buyers show up. Uh, well, what happens at, when the Fed stops buying and QE2 ah, goes funny away? Funny you should mention that. The Fed has been the purchaser of two-thirds of all the treasuries during QE2. So I asked that question, too. When, two -thirds, when the two-thirds buyer disappears... Who is going to pick up the slack? Now, because it's the United States and because our paper is generally considered the most trustworthy in the world, there will be buyers. But remember that the Fed's objective was to make interest rates low. Those buyers are not going to have that same objective, and I think interest rates go up sooner rather than later. Don't we, though, Peter? I mean, we see, uh, obviously, a horrible situation unfolding in Europe. So maybe you don't want to buy their paper. Japanese have more debt than we do, so maybe you don't want to buy their paper. I mean, we are the least dirty shirt, right? That, can't that sustain us to 15 trillion in debt, to 20 trillion in debt, to 30 trillion in debt, another 11 increases in the debt ceiling? No. Matt, the simple answer is no. It won't sustain us. The question that is of most immediate concern to all of us is the impact on interest rates. When will interest rates start to reflect the terrible condition that we are in now financially? I mean, the, you don't have to go very far and make up numbers. If you just pay attention to what the Congressional Budget Office is saying, and they're nonpartisan, their outlook is pretty scary. Peter, you write in your book, actually it's in the conclusion, we've been here before, it's not the first time the global economy has been held in the death-like grip of debts and deficits. What's different this time around? Is it just the, the amounts, the staggering amounts at this point that no doubt about it, something needs to be done here? Yeah, the numbers are overwhelming. We've never been at this point in the numbers. Unless we attack the deficit problem, we are going to have a financial calamity that takes more imagination than I have to figure out. Worse but, than the one we just lived through. Oh, yeah. Uh, no question. Look at what's happening in Europe. They told us Greece would never default. Greece will default. They'll call it restructuring, but it's technically a default. And then you have to ask the question, we don't know the answer, where does that lead? Do you have a domino effect? Does Ireland step up to the plate? What about Spain? What about Portugal? Well, and you say that, that Europe is going to be the trigger mm -hmm. for the, cata the global catastrophe that must inevitably ensue. When do you think that happens? I mean, is this something that you see happening this summer? Is it imminent? Yeah. Uh, timing, I've been in the business long enough to know that timing is not something anybody should try to predict. But I'll give you a range. It, the, it starts with the Greek default, because that's the first one that's going to happen. And that, the timing soon. is you think soon? Oh, yeah, anywhere from Monday to uh, the end of the year. But within that time frame, uh, you can be assured that there will be some form of Greek restructuring. How, but how long is this all drawn out? I mean, Matt and I, you know, we talk about what, go back a year ago this March, and we were talking about the problems in Greece. Mm -hmm. And here we are today. So how drawn out is it? Uh, this 9-11, right. financial 9-11 that Very, you're talking about. It, 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 let's just, just to talk, to answer your question, Carol, about Greece. Uh, Greeks, the Greeks have debt that is coming due that they're going to have to refinance, which they can't. The interest rates on Greek debt are in the 20% plus. They can't refinance and they can't pay the debt service. So clearly the situation is now at a level where if you just draw a straight line, you realize that it can't go on. Uh, the financial crisis as it moves to our shores will be a function of Congress getting together and taking measures to simply bring the budget deficit in balance. Aren't we, though, I mean, at first at least a uh, beneficiary of the European crisis because there's a flight to safety. Yes. Where do you put your money? You're not going to hold it in Greek debt, right? So you, you need a place Absolutely where you can get correct. 3%. 
Absolutely correct. The, the United States has the most trusted financial institutions in the world. Whenever there's a crisis, we are the location of last resort for capital because we're trusted. The question on the table is, what rate should we pay given our own financial situation in this environment? And so I think what we need to be looking for is when interest rates are going to start reflecting it, and I think that's sooner rather than later. Let me ask you, uh, Art Laffer, with whom you've worked before, yes. said that you've got the proper prescription here. Actually, Sam Donaldson, interestingly enough, from yeah. ABC News, says if only they would listen to you, everything mm -hmm. would be fine. Um, are you at all optimistic that Washington will follow your prescription? Because David Stockman uh, seems to think there's, there's no way out of this that, that's going to be not, uh, not, that's going to be pleasant. Well, uh, there's no way out that's going to be pleasant. I agree completely with that statement. There is a way out, and it will be unpleasant. That's why it hasn't happened yet. It's just the way politics works. But it has to be catastrophic, right? I mean, 9-11, very bad. A financial 9-11, it will take a financial catastrophe to get them to work together just as they did then. Once, and we can only hope and pray that they eventually work together. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, well, we're talking about what? Significant spending cuts, and we also have to see increases in Absolutely. taxes to make this work. You bet. What, what, yeah. what do you think specifically needs to be done? Right. Right. What's, what's your plan? What, what plan do you outline in the book? Okay. First of all, there are no untouchables. The idea is that you will have to look at Medicare. You will have to look at all the other social spending and address them. On the tax side, this is where my friend Art Laffer is certainly not going to agree, we will need some taxes. The easiest way to solve this is with a value-added tax because it's universal. It raises a lot of money. And once you pass it, you don't see it anymore David, because it's built into the prices. David Stockman says the same thing. He also talks about some taxes on Wall Street transactions. Sure. Is that throw it all in? Why not? <laughs> yeah, the, the point is, we got we have to raise revenue. Raising revenue is not pleasant, but we've got to get away from this business where Republicans say absolutely no taxes of any kind, and the Democrats say you can't cut my favorite projects. What about corporate taxes? You know the debate that's out there that you raise taxes on corporations. They're not going to hire. I, they're not going to do anything. Well, and you see Robert Mundell saying you need to cut them to 15 percent. Uh, David Malpass agrees. So yeah. Sure, Art Laffer definitely so agrees. And so do I. The idea is that we cannot keep going on having the highest corporate tax rate in the world. We have to be competitive. We have to create jobs. So on that score, there is no question that is part of a total tax package. Some will go up, some will go down. Ultimately, revenues have to go up. We'll get emails, though, on the real tax rate paid by corporations, as you know the stories that are out there. That yeah. With all but the maybe loopholes, they, they pay a lot less. Loopholes and broaden the you. base, the real tax rate would be 15%. <laughs> yeah, they're coming exactly. to you, Carol. <laughs> exactly. Peter, Peter Tennis, thank you so much. Pleasure. Great book.